Now, given that this new display will be OLED, we could also see some thinner bezels, which I do think are needed just to give the iPad a fresh look from the front. But more importantly, we could also see the dynamic island. We've rendered a concept of both versions, one with the current bezels just thinner, and the other with the dynamic island. And I think we can all agree that the dynamic island one looks 10 times better. Of course, the only downside is that with an iPhone, you mostly tend to use it in portrait orientation, meaning that the dynamic island will almost always be at the top. Whereas with an iPad, that's a device that you tend to switch from portrait to landscape quite often. So if anything, the dynamic island should be software based with the Face ID camera still being built into the bezel. But yeah, I think having a dynamic island would be pretty cool and would bring more parity between the iPad and the iPhone. And I think it's also safe to assume that with there such are two a big change that you should we could be aware of. And those are potential burn-in and also a potential price increase. Burn-in isn't something that recent smartphones have experienced, which is good news. But it is very likely that because of the much higher brightness levels of the iPad Pro, we could see some burn-in in places like the status bar, which does tend to be static all the time. Now, let's talk about that price increase. So, according to the Alec, current OLED displays for tablets cost around $100 to $150. But the price for these custom OLED displays would be between $270 to $350, so significantly more expensive, which will very likely impact the retail price of the iPad Pros as well. In fact, the Alec believes that a